Hello, hello. Morning. Hello. Hey, Eric. Rafwin, Abraham. How's everyone going? All right. Um, just a couple more minutes. Finishing the setup here. I'm gonna have to reload the chat or some. Huh. One second. Huh, all right, I'm having the same issue as last time with the chat. I'm just going to fix that. One second. Right, so the chat is not working, or I cannot see it, and that's kind of like the the main thing, right? As in, that's how that's how you drive the questions, and and I can address them. But if I cannot see it, yep, it's not working. Well, we'll see. Uh, I just messaged Kyle. See what happens. If you guys, uh, yeah, if you guys are there, I don't know if you're if you're typing anything. I cannot cannot see it. Ah, oh, hang on. I think it's back up. All right. Hey, Khalil. I think just the the YouTube channel for for now is working in terms of the. Of the chat, um, so I don't have anything in particular for today as as anything planned. Uh, it could be monster, it could be creature monster. Um, I had some ideas of something that I haven't done that I would like to try, especially because it will be, you know, a good project to show you guys some stuff. But yeah, it could be anything. In fact, yeah, there's no nothing in in particular that I feel like I do. Uh, all right we're gonna give it a few more minutes just to see if we can get this going For some reason let me see you guys see this chat I just message just put a message on the chat let me know if you can see that. Either YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook. Yeah, cool. All right, all right. That's that's good enough. As long as you can, as you can see it, um, we can we can get started. So I don't know if you guys have any suggestions of what to do. Um, like I said, I was planning to go for something like a, you know, those stylized little icon books in a. Kind of like a Warcraft style type of thing. That's that was one of the ideas. Otherwise, we can go for the save option uh, and go for a creature stuff. I just haven't designed or have anything in in mind, so it might be a little bit, you know. But um, designing as I sculpt is gonna be hard to to talk and, and show you specific, um, you know, techniques and tools like that. Tabletop RPG mini is my suggestion. Don't know. How bent out of those you are after working at Hero Forge? Um, tabletop RPG Mini. Uh, maybe that's similar to what I was 
planning to do not sure um the thing is uh we could just go for a for a creature you, you know just do something really simple as a creature um the only thing with that is just it's mostly sculpting and it's mostly me just designing as i go so it might be a bit boring to watch um and also it might not be very i don't know instructional in a way just because you know they're they're the the type of um tools that i would use on a daily basis to just sculpt there's nothing too out of the ordinary let's see we get a a cool idea going we might just stick with it But I doubt it. If I see a good shape, we stay with it. And this is the thing, right? Like, because it is a repetitive action, as in the same sort of process. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the, the five day challenge that I had. Um, before I open the the extra mile course again, that was a kind of like me showing you how I approach this type of things, whether it's cartoon, cartoonish, whether it's creature, character, anything, um, and that covers a little bit more of the the basics of how I block out these things. But uh, for the most part, it's very similar, and you know, it's the same thing. So because it becomes a repetitive action for me to just talk talk as I. <laughs> As I build this is is not as easy, <laughs> whereas if I'm explaining, um, you know, something in particular like a technique, uh, I can just branch out and show you tips and tricks. But we'll see how we go. Um, so uh, pixel desire are those videos still up? No, I had to take them down. Uh, they were just for a limited time, and. Um, I'm I'm restructuring the website because yeah I've had um quite a bit of interest in the in the course itself so I'm trying to set it up in a way that is a little bit easier for for some of you guys so I'm restructuring the website and once I finish with that I will I will put them up, back up um yeah so that's it <laughs> and not yet they're unavailable as of a couple of weeks ago or a week ago um, but then uh, I will pull them back up. All right. So I think I don't know. I don't know if this one has legs, as in it's worth pursuing this type of creature. That's a humanoid feel to it. Um, to me, to me, kaiju. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what would be the best way to describe it. Well, we can stick with it. I mean, it could be just a, a quick warm warm up sketch, and then we can do something different. Uh, as I said, didn't have anything specifically planned for this for this stream. Um, I was hoping to get driven by your question, guys, and and help you out with whatever you had in I'm just gonna append a sphere for the eyes. Just to get a quick reference of where to put those mirror and weld. 
and then just readjust this shape. Add a bit of the, the bony structure here. In smaller eyes. This is the thing when I'm designing this type of creatures and, and characters. I tend to just go back and forth quite a bit before settling in shape. Like, you know, this feels kind of like a hammerhead type of shark, but I'm not sure if I like this thing at the back, so I just go back and pre med. And that's kind of like one of the beauties of working with fiber mesh, uh, sorry, fiber mesh, dyna mesh, or sculptures. One of those. Um, processes it just allows you to come back and double check the silhouette and, and figure out whether or not it's working and usually I just stick with a very low resolution or a very low um, dynamic resolution right now I have quite a bit um, of polygons I would stick with way less polygons at this stage but um, this allows me to just do a quick a quick pass on details although not necessarily the, the approach that I would take most of the time. Um, I like to block in the primary shapes and stick with the primary shapes for a long time until I'm happy with the, the silhouette, but in this case I just want to whip something out really quickly and see if we can you know, move on to something else. Let's call this one the warm-up sketch. Go ahead and do a indication of what the mouth might be. Something like that. Be alright. We can define the eyes, the area of the eyes a bit more. This is something that I do all, all the time as well with the damp standard brush. I tend to use it with the alt key as well. And that sort of gives me these very sharp lines that then I can just smooth out. But um, it kind of leaves a mark of where I trace that. So it's, it's very useful in that sense. All right. What I think I'll do is I'm going to mask out area because he looks quite happy. I'm gonna blur that a little bit, invert that mask, and I can bring in the move brush actually, or the move um, gizmo. I'm gonna extend this, extend that a bit. Go and with the move brush, I'm gonna give it an, an underbite. And this is one of the reasons I like to stick with um, a low resolution for quite a bit, just so that I can do this type of changes and I'm not too constrained or fixated in the in the details or or volumes that I already planned <laughs> or described. So um, yeah, uh, with version 2019 of series, would you do anything different in creating the dreadlocks that you did a while back? Oh yes, definitely. That is uh, um, the dreadlocks tutorial is from back in 2014, I would say. It's quite old. Um, that was kind of like the the method that I found useful at the time. But with you know, um, at that time there was no nano mesh, for example. So that's something that I would bring back. Um, so there's tons of different ways to do it. I think it's still relevant. Uh, you can still get a pretty good result with that technique um, about the dreadlocks tutorial. The only thing is that uh, it produces a lot of geometry. So it's it's kind of kind of like a, a good a good approach for a concept sculpt or for a concept art. But if you want to take it into a you know animation or render in a 
real-time engine or something like that, it definitely give you some problems. So there's there's some ways to to work around that and and new new techniques and new workflows that might be a little bit better for that in that sense. But yeah, if you want to just do some some kind of concept art, uh, it should work fine. I just think that there's some other new techniques that might be really useful. Um, that one that one's just the the type of thing that worked for me at the time. I don't know if this is anything good. I'm gonna give it a nose, something to breathe. Exaggerate that. I'm gonna mask this area. And push. Okay. Um, I think that's good enough. Let's see, it's a, a quick sketch that looks all right. Let's let's leave it there, or you know, let's do quick refinement. Ah, oh, this is something cool that I can show you. Um, this stage, let's say that I have some blocking. Again, this is way detail. Uh, it has way too much resolution for a block out. Uh, but let's say that this had less resolution and I'm and I want to explore the shapes a little bit uh, One of the things that I do is if I have the eyes in the right place or I'm happy with the eyes what I'll do is I'll mask out an area with the mask pen so something like this With a very blurred edge around the mask right and I can blur a little bit more Check the inside as well. So that way, anything that I do um, won't affect this the eye region. So the eyes kind of like stay in the same place. Uh, but then I can take something like the move elastic. And again, this is this will work much better if you have a less resolution. So it's gonna be easier. But with the move elastic, you can explore shapes quite a bit and and make like a better creature and change things really quickly it gives us a, it gives it a, a completely different personality So at the at the blocking stage, this is something that I do quite often. Bring my move elastic and change things just to see they work a little bit better. Also with the move brush, if you set the accu curve on, which for you guys should be under the brush palette uh, here on the curve, just enable that, and that gives you a more pointy type of move effect. And I just like to use that to push in or pull polygons out um, that are a little bit sharper. And then I can just refine it with any other brush. But it's a good it's a good starting point. And then obviously you can go ahead and refine some of the bits of the what could be a suggestion of the anatomy. So this is a creature. Try to stay true to the to certain landmarks. Um, that are easy to identify, even though it's a fantasy creature and not necessarily a human character. But we need to we need to anchor the the basically what I like to do with this, and I think it's a it's a good practice is to create some landmarks of the anatomy. It might not all of them be there, but if you do, you know, let's say some suggestion of what the neck muscles for this character would be. Um, based on real anatomy, either if it is animal or human, whatever it is, 
then that creates kind of like a, an anchor an anchor point for the viewer to recognize that as a as a possibility it doesn't have to be real realistic or real it just need to be possible and the way that i think we find that out or judge a character is based on the anatomy i mean judge whether or not is 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 a feasible character to exist in the world Again, this looks pretty blobby now. It became a little bit too too blobby, and that's another reason why I like to stay in a low resolution mesh. But I think it for now it works. Give it a few more wrinkles. And I like the. This is something that I do all the time as well. I love to give it that extra fat, that extra sense of gravity to the to the skin. And the yeah, and the fat and the muscles. Let's remove the mask. Let's do quick. Build up. All right. I'll check the chat in a second. So there, there it is. <laughs> a quick, a quick creature sketch. Looks kind of funny from the from the front, like smiling. Um, but it's all right. Let's see the chat and see if we. Do you guys want me to continue with this, or if we want something else? Hey, doggy, how's it going? Refresh my memory that many uses of nano mesh. Great, that's awesome. Hey, Mr. M Mr. Sanson, how's it going? Plans for today? Uh, just whatever you guys want. How do you show? Uh, can you show us how to create a brush? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can show you how to create a brush. Creating a brush is really easy in ZBrush. It's just whether or not it is the right brush that you wanna, or the the right effect that you wanna create. Um, but yeah, with with that in mind, I think we can just keep adding a few stuff to this feature, and then uh, maybe we can add some details with a custom brush. Maybe that that could be that could be something. So let's go ahead and define some areas. I'm gonna redynamesh this. Um, show us a way to do dreadlocks using nano mesh or other method. Um, maybe, maybe if we have time. I seen. I mean, we can do a few things. We cannot do. We cannot do all of them, but. This this character might have dreadlocks, so <laughs> you know, let's just do a medley of uh, just a mix of different things, utilizing this sketch. I'm gonna refine the eyes. The eyes are an area that I, generally speaking, spend quite a bit of time making sure that they don't have to be perfect. At this stage, at least, but if they are, if they have, if what I try to capture with the eyes basically is a feeling like it doesn't have to be, you know, super precise at this stage, I will refine it later. But if early on I can get like a good feeling, like a good expression, then it helps, it helps me when I do uh, continue designing the character. So right now it looks kind of like dull, but. You know, I can push this up and then the lower lid up, for example, and do con kind of like a more happy expression. But that's not what I want. Um, but that sort of thing. So I, I just try to capture something, some kind of feeling with it. Not really focusing on on the necessarily the anatomy of the eye at this point. It's just trying to get that feeling. I don't know if that makes any sense, but... It's just the eyes. It's just we're just drawn to that. So, if I capture something that I like on the eyes, it's gonna make it. Um, it's gonna help me make sure that I. Um, it it helps with the long longevity of the project, and what I mean by that is it helps me to um, keep working on it because I kind of like the feeling, and that is given by the eyes. 
most of the time. Not every not every time, but the skill with the and the primary shapes. But but the eyes are quite important. So if I if I like what I'm doing when I open it up again or I come back to it, it's not like oh I have to finish this again. It's more like, yeah, cool, this is this is looking good. Let's continue with it. A bit of a standard brush just to add a bit of volumes here, not like the lips. And we can yeah, we can do a custom brush to add some details as well as maybe some dreadlocks. We'll see. It would be cool if we can if you picked one of those and sketch it on ZBrush. Uh, one of those blue pencil sketches. Yeah, those sketches. I've been doing uh, quite a bit of rendering lately, like offline rendering. So I have to wait for the computer to finish. I don't know what I'm not doing it at, at night. I just like to just to double check that everything is working in the middle of it. But um, yeah, so I've been doing a few renders lately and I'm using that render time to sort of do some practice and do some sketches that I haven't done, you know, 2D sketching for, for a while. So that's what Mr. Sanson is referring to. Um, uh, plus, I, I was organizing my, my desk and, and I found this uh, blue pencil. And yeah, anything in blue pencil or red pencil, they look, generally speaking, they look cool. Alright, I think I'm just getting into too many details and not entirely happy with the shape either. And that's that's one of the the main problems of adding too many details too early on in the process. Because if you see that many details and if you're kind of happy with how the lines are working in terms of the details, but the main shapes are not really are not really there. Um it becomes a problem because you become a little bit biased just because you don't want to destroy the the lines or the details that you did but the the main shapes are not working either so it's kind of it's, it's a shame <laughs> it's a shame to do a, that many details so early but again this is just a quick sketch to show you some some techniques so we might you know we might just leave it like that um, let's see how we time. Yeah, we have plenty of time. So we did this in half an hour. We can do the other half an hour. Do some more details with the with the brush, with a custom brush. We can. I'll show you guys how to make a brush, and then we can do some uh, maybe some poly paint, and yeah, maybe some dreadlocks. I don't know how this guy would look with dreadlocks, but <laughs> we can do something. And I'm just using the trim dynamic to um, get rid of some of those bumpy areas you know like polishing some of the planes at least uh, at least getting the, the planes right will be will be helpful I think I need to add a few more Add around the neck. Work on these propitious. All right. Maybe it would be good to. I mean, this part of the mouth is um. It's kind of like waiting for me to come back and and work on it. Because he doesn't have necessarily uh, a bottom lip, just kind of just there. We could add some some fangs or some teeth sticking out, but that's that's too obvious. Let's just go for something different. I'm gonna give it a bit of a bit volume, a bit of volume here for the bottom lip. Thing we can do here is just bring in the inflate brush to tie this space together a bit more. So again, depending on the on the project that you 
are working on maybe this process uh, it would be better to have different subtools for example different or or at least polygroups for the jaw and the and the rest of the head the skull but in this case just using the the infrared brush to a to a good job all right i'm gonna bring in thumbs on the brush using the old key just to accentuate so this line it's kind of like marking this area and that allows me to have a better idea of where I can place some place some of the muscles of the face trim dynamic all right so I think from the side it looks much better than from the front I don't know if it's the the mushroom head or what exactly but Might be that. Exaggerate that quite a bit. That's more interesting. Kind of like a yeah. Going back to that idea of that hammerhead. Hammerhead shape. But I feel like we need to increase the contrast with the with these shapes here at the top. You'll see things change quite a bit as I design this in 3D and I'm also thinking kind of like in a you, you know like having a, a story behind it just to to see uh, having a, a little story will inform the the decisions that you make um, design wise I don't know what exactly this creature is what the story is but as long as I have an, an idea of where it might be in terms of the the environment where it lives whether it's uh, an evil creature or a, or a gentle giant type of thing that that could inform some of the decisions that I make in the design and yeah I think that looks a bit more interesting I have to think a bit more about this area the back it all connects what part what part is bone what part is for the most part it should be you know closer to the, to the skull I'm gonna polish it dynamic and again if you're doing something like this I would strongly recommend to stick with a lower resolution for a long time for as long as you can or at least for as long as um, until you're happy with the with the silhouette so I've been changing it quite a bit yeah I'm not sure if I like that see <laughs> this is the this is the thing just go back and forward quite quite a bit I'm gonna push all this back again not happy with this. I'm gonna go back in time. So I kind of like this one, and I think this is what the one, the part that ruined it. So I'm gonna stick with that. See this, and then just trim this this area a bit. Just to um, that's another thing. That area was a little bit too spiky, or it had like too much of a pointy corner, and all the volumes and the the overall shape of this character is very rounded so try to also think about the the impact or certain uh, smaller elements of the design and how that changes the the shape and and how it's uh, how the the main volume is red okay, i'm going to need more volume here just gonna flatten this a bit more. I'm gonna use the edge polish. A bit of pressure here. This area flat, somehow flat. 
the I don't know where we can put the the dreadlocks for this guy. We'll give it a go. It might look alright. Gonna bring in the damp standard brush. Find this area a bit. Not too bad. I'm gonna bring in the gizmo, enter that to the mask area. I'm gonna make sure that I have the perspective off and that I have this icon to lock all the subtools, which are just the eyes and the and the head. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit, this axis, so I can see it in a different way when I rotate and snap the camera. So yeah, not entirely happy with that. I'll do one more little structural change, if that changes anything, and if not, we'll just move on. Okay, I'm gonna bring in my elastic, move elastic, move elastic, I lost it, hang on, move elastic, here we go, so, I'm just gonna shift things a little bit, so I'm gonna push the jaw, make it a a much more muscular this masseter muscle here make it a bit bigger and instead squishing the 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 top of the skull that's just going to change the the primary shape or the main shape to be kind of like a triangular shape from the top and bottom um and that obviously changes things quite a bit so And also use the move, move elastic with the accu curve. So when we move this, it's gonna give us a, a very pointy, very pointy area like this. That's not bad. <laughs> Having like a horn there uh, or something at the back. Let's see. What's more interesting? Something, something like that, or something like that. All right, I think I'm gonna go for this. <laughs> it's just completely different to what I had in mind, but this one looks definitely more interesting. Just need to compensate a little bit here at the the bottom. And we we'll probably have to redynamish all of this. And obviously, now that we have this weird thing sticking out, um, we probably have to compensate a bit with other with other areas of the of the main shape. So, if you look at it from the front, it looks quite flimsy. Like it's not it doesn't feel connected. So that is kind of like the next step that I would do, probably with the clay builder brush, so that it's faster. And we can try to connect that um, so that the, this this new volume feels more part of the of the creature. I'll have a look at the at the chat. I just I see some activity at the the chat going on. All right, see that in a second. Okay, I think that's that's a bit better. the The front looks ridiculous, <laughs> so I don't know. Let's see. Let's try to connect this top area. Uh, assuming this is kind of like a bone, bony structure, needs to have some kind of solid base. If this is one of the 
I don't know, one of the parts of the body that he uses, this creature uses to either attack or defend himself. Needs to have some kind of like solid backup, I guess. It's like um, um, I was I was watching this this video the other day, kind of like a documentary, like a mini documentary. I think it was uh, David Attenborough. Uh, I love his shows, and they were they were talking about the the woodpecker that has the the way that the cranium and the and the skull is structured. Um, it kind of like dissipates. Every time that it hits the the wood or whatever, when it's woodpecking, <laughs> it it basically um, diffuses that impact around the cranium so that it doesn't, you know, um, affect the brain too much. It's really interesting. So th that those are the type of things that I rem that I remember when I when I do this tip this this type of things. It's because oh, this kind of like my work as a woodpecker not is not a shark anymore <laughs> or it's not a yeah, it's not a, a hammerhead shark anymore. It's more like a woodpecker. So let's just think about the the impact of if it if he if this guy were to use this thing, we still don't know if it is a good decision or not, but if you were to use it, what would be the the impact that it would have on the on the rest of the character or the like the functionality of it. It's not just because it looks cool in the design, but if it is actually functional, it has a bit more of a, you know, it feels more intentional. I'm gonna add a bit of a, some lines in here to indicate some, some protrusions of the, of the bone. Of the cranium here, you know, trying to figure out where the nose is going to be now. I think it's fine here. I think here at the bottom. I'm gonna try to replicate some of the design and the concept here at the bottom. So as you can see, this has changed quite a bit from the original idea. And I now I think that this muscle is a bit too fat. Back in. And compensate here with the with the jaw. I think this we need to refine this this line a bit more, and it feels like the guy is quite bulky and quite strong. So I don't know if this very thin shape is is helping. Let's see if we can trim it down a bit, just make it a little bit more, um, yeah, a bit shorter. Uh, we can do that with the slice curve or the trim curve actually. We just cut it. Oops, just cut it like that. I think that's much better. And let's just dynamic. All right, and let's smooth this area, bring in the trim dynamic. Okay, that feels a bit better for the, you know, more suitable for the, for the frame of the the character. So the the neck, all this area, and the the chubby face, it's it's more in line with these lines. Whereas if I had something a little bit more skinny, then probably a longer, more pointy horn or cranium like that would be suitable, but not in this case. So let's do. Just gonna refine this here a little bit, and I had a look. I'll have a look at the chat. And some of, some of these concepts that I've been talking about in terms of um I guess character design say and the the process of designing a creature maybe with a story 
um, I, I go a little bit more in depth in the in the course that I teach the extra mile and it's quite interesting to see the different views or the different takes on a character from like the different students they have um, they, they're creating like really really awesome stuff but the you know the thinking behind and, and the type of things that they're doing is kind of like everyone is a storyteller they're doing all sorts of um, different stuff different projects and they all have you know it's very clear to to see the the different stories behind them it's pretty cool um but what i was going to say is that i don't know if you guys saw the um the free master class i did uh three three videos um about you know some tips and tricks and some basically just talking about character design presentation and how to turn your your sculpture into a polish illustration um so that is something that i'm um, as I mentioned before, I'm restructuring the 3D Concept Artist website, so not the Zero Guides, the other website that I have um, for the courses and, and all that. So I will bring that back as well. So if you, in case you're interested, I'll let you know. If you're part of the of my email list, I will also email you and let you know. But I thought I'd mention that because you were wondering where those videos went. They're all part of the restructure to make it a little bit simpler for you guys. All right. Um, let's have a look. Oh, there's a little bit of a activity here. So I'm gonna let me check. Um, shows create a brush. Yes, cool, cool. Um, we we'll pick one of those and sketch the horn. Horn character looks cool. <laughs> All right. Hey, Alex. Um, are you using Render Farm? No, I'm just using my computer for a render. Sorry, these 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 questions have been probably here for a while. I'm just getting to them. Uh, so Alex is saying. If I'm asking if I'm using render farm, but uh, no, I don't. I don't have access to a render farm. Uh, sharp edge brush. Uh, that's just using the. I guess referring to the damp standard brush. Yeah, I'm just using that using the alt key, and that gives me that that sharp edge. So the normal standard brush sort of carves in. If I hold the alt, which inverts the the effect, it's just gonna bring that up. Hopefully, that's what you meant. From Krogan to Evangelion. <laughs> yeah, I guess it has kind of like an Evangelion type of feel. Yeah, that's right. Maybe that's where I, that's what I'm one of the one of the reference in my visual library. <laughs> I guess that's where where I'm taking this from. Comics Legend, how do you know when to settle on a design and move forward? Do you give yourself a time limit to commit to a design? Um most of the time I'm constrained by the time. Uh, be because of the deadline, but in in personal projects and that sort of thing, when I when I feel it works, um, I just stop. It's 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 very personal. I think it's not it's not, it's not a. It's hard to tell you exactly like oh when you reach this point that's when your character is done. There's always something else that you can do always, um, but uh, what I like to do is just gather feedback. So, um, I have a, a private group. With um, you know some some friends that work in the industry and and we just uh, post things in there, right? And we just give ourselves critiques and you know we we try to be very honest as in how we how we give that feedback. Uh, so that's one of the things that I think is crucial. And for example, in the in the course in the extra mile course that I teach, we have a private community. And that's I think that has been one of the best things to come out of the the whole course because the amount of of feedback that you get and the amount of um, you know iterations that you can do is just outstanding. So you post one thing and within five minutes or ten minutes you have like three or four other artists just chipping in and tell you, okay, this looks great. How about you try to you know change the the shape a little bit or uh, maybe you have some issues with the with the shoulder uh, have a look at that in the anatomy and they're sharing references they're sharing 
thoughts. So um, that I'm not saying that that's the only way. By the way, I'm not saying that um, it's, that's the only way in, in that community. Any forum, any Zero Central, any community would be absolutely fantastic for that sort of thing. Um, so I would say gathering feedback, and once you get most of the feedback um, saying, "Okay, this looks great," or you get less of the of the suggestions or changing things. Uh, when you start to see that those suggestions are more subjective, as in you see, oh, it would be great if this guy has have uh, wings, right? So that might be a good idea, but that's something very subjective. Where if, whereas if it's a, an objective criticism or an objective feedback, like um, uh, pay attention to how the you know the volume here at the top, it's a little bit you know in this case a bit blobby. It's not very straight. It's hard to define the planes. And then you go, okay, now that's fair enough. But, you know, that's something that will actually help the design um, when we polish those those lines and try to get those planes right. That is more of an objective criticism, I think. Um, so I think I branched out a little bit, but my my point is, when when you have um, people criticizing or, or in a in a good way, like constructively, and and give you feedback on your on the on your design, whether it's you know, if you're part of the course or if you have uh, access to other communities, Discord channels, whatever it is, and people are giving you constructive criticism to actually help you with the design, that is uh, the best way to measure whether or not you're making progress and where you can move on to the next stage. And the way that I judge that, like uh, the way that I judge whether or not I can move on, is um, depending on the type of advice, the type of criticism or yeah, or advice that I that I get. So if it I if I feel it is very objective, then I see all right, you know, you're right. I have to keep going with this, and and this definitely looks a bit weird. Uh, let's refine it. Um, and if the if the feedback is a bit more personal, more subjective, like in terms of suggestions on on things of what would be better, based on what they like and what other other artists that comment like. Um, then I think, all right, I think I'm good. <laughs> I think I'm good in terms of design. Those are good to have, um, good things to have, but it's not necessarily something that um, would dramatically impact the vision or the or the design that I have in mind. I don't know if that makes any sense. I think it's just, I just branched out too, too much and I tend to do that as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, hopefully that gives you a, an idea. Uh, it's It's hard to say when a design is ready. Hopefully that gives you an idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that answer. Sometimes I just uh, just branched out and end up talking about you know rubbish. All right. Um, I think the <laughs> the front of this character really bothers me. It looks ridiculous. I don't know why. I think it's just the planes are not very well defined. It looks like a helmet. Maybe. Maybe it's the the fact that it's quite quite thick. I mean, yeah, compared to the side, it looks a little bit leaner, a little bit more muscular, um, especially with these with these shapes. Whereas from the front, before it looked a bit more chubby. So I'm gonna keep it muscular, but less chubby. And a, an easy way to do it is just relaxing some of the of these blobby areas of the of the neck and bringing the jaw a little bit closer. So I'm just gonna define the jaw a bit better with um, the damp standard brush. Just a line so that I can easily judge that from the front and bottom. It doesn't have to be that strong. So for example, this this area here that is not necessarily working for me. So I might have to again think about the functionality of this spike here or this. Yeah, this this bony area and how it connects. So probably gonna be some muscles here, but then uh, protrusion here of the bone. Ow. And I'm just using the standard brush here. And refine with the clay brush as well. And another thing that hopefully you've seen is that I try to stick to simple brushes, nothing too complex. I have some customized brushes that I try not to use too much here 
so that you guys can if you wanted to follow along but um, I try not to use too many custom made or complex brushes at this stage just keep it simple focusing on, on the volumes and the, the overall shape and then when I get to the detail area or the detail part um, detailing part of this that's when I tend to use some of the more custom brushes that I have and that I've made uh, just because that part is is easy I have already figured out the you know the the main shapes and the secondary forms so adding details is really easy I mean I mean ZBrush is kind of like the best option for that sort of thing so it has a lot of um, really really cool tools to add um, details it's not it's not something that I worry too much I prefer to to have a, a very strong silhouette, a very strong primary and secondary shapes, uh, making sure that design is functional, that it works, and and then you know then move on and say you know what uh, we can we can add more details to make it more more interesting. All right, I think this is looking all right. I mean, from the front it looks very sketchy, very blobby. So that's something that would have to. I will have to come back and and refine, especially this area. It feels, it feels like this is a bit too much. I'm gonna simplify this a bit and just balance that out with the with some of the details that I might place around here. All right. Um, I think I, I branched out a, a bit too much, and I could sort of keep reading this. Um, he uses it to detect radio waves, so he doesn't have to buy that thousand cable package in the neighbor. That's that's a that's a good reason to have that that in there. Um, Muy to bom dia. Paolo just wanted to say thanks for the five-day challenge last month. Enjoy learning so much. Cool. Glad you liked it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll bring it back once I fix up the website or, or restructure it. Just hadn't have, just haven't had too much time to do that, but they will come back. Uh, poly, poly paint for finish. Uh, yeah, we can try that. What's your tablet, tablet graphic for the 3D or 3D? Um, the tablet that I have. Um. It don't seem thick. <laughs> it just doesn't take. Um, a Cintiq, what is it? A Cintiq 24 Pro. I think that's that's kind of like the the model. Cintiq 24 Pro. That's the tablet that I use. Okay, I'm just going back to the top view. That's something that I haven't haven't touched too much, and that generally speaking gives gives you a very different perspective from the from the rest, right? If you just look at this from the top, it looks very different than if you look at it from the bottom, from the front. I have a feeling that. Yeah, that looks better. I'm gonna exaggerate the you know, like the sigmatic arc for what it could be. That area. That should compensate. I mean <laughs> it looks, looks looks really funny from the from the front. Um I'm really not that impressed with this guy front view. It looks now it's like completely rounded. Oh forget about the eyes. I'll just place that later. We now do all that. Do and do. Go. Forget about the eyes. I'm just gonna try to fix the the front view. I'm happy with this. I'm gonna go for a try to go for a triangular shape in in most of the angles. So try to keep it. You know, rounded in a way, 
just to give that muscular bulky feeling but so trying to maintain the uh, this type of spiky or, or very pointy shapes from all the from all the angles if I can achieve that without being too obvious and even do the same thing here for area make the jaw a little bit shorter everything a bit shorter really Hopefully this doesn't crash at, at any point, so I can I can do a time lapse and then share that with you guys as well, just so that <laughs> you can see the the design process is is a bit um, chaotic in in the sense that it changes quite a bit. All right, so it's kind of like this triangular shape that I, like a diamond shape that I can go for. I'm gonna push this in, trying to refine the the eye, the eyes. I mean, this is going back to something. I just, I kind of broke this a little bit, but refine that. I'm going to simplify all of these lines a bit. Uh, let's see. We still have like a, an hour to go, so that gives us some time to refine this a bit more. And then get into maybe poly paint and do the the brush that I was talking about. I might leave the the dreadlocks for a different. Uh, some of you guys have forgot um, who who it was suggested about uh, doing some dreadlocks for this guy, but I don't think it would go well. Uh, but we'll definitely tackle that in a in a different stream. All right, so definitely the the front view is the problematic one, but I feel it's a bit better. It's just a matter of uh, polishing some of those blobby areas, and that would some that would be something that I would do um, with um, after a quick retopology, like a C remesh, and then I project those details and work um, my way up, just refining those shapes. But for the stream, I think I'm gonna leave it there. Like, don't worry too much about that stage, and then, yeah, and then we can just um, do the other, the other stuff, which is probably more interesting for you guys. Poly paint and all that. Okay, I'm gonna bring in this standard brush. Trying to refine some of these fat deposits. Okay. All right. Um, no stream dynamic. And with the damned standard brush, go back and try to get those lines that I had before were kind of working a little bit better. This is kind of like the the end of the mouth, and I would assume like if he opens the mouth the mouth quite like wide, um, there will be quite a bit of you know memory folds or, or wrinkles around this area. 
trying to exaggerate that a little bit but also try to keep an eye on the areas of details and the areas of rest there's a there's a bit of uh, complex shapes around here and they don't necessarily read too well at this point have to focus on that a bit more this is going to be the nose Kind of like a stretched nostril. Combined with a bit of bone. Alright. Um, I take it back. I don't like this. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's just um it's just it's all part of the process. Not entirely happy with any of these shapes here at the back. In fact, um this is gonna do something a little bit extreme. This will give me a different a different perspective or a different idea. Um Dupont pain, yes, uh direct go with every character. Um have question what's the better what what is better for a beginner to use a reference photo or on, on trying to model it or model it or concept? Um I I would say just as a beginner, um, it's better to try to copy copy stuff. I would try to copy from nature, though. Like I would try to, you know, try to make a plant or a an insect, uh, whatever you feel like doing. But something that is, um, if you can actually get the the real object, that's much better than just getting photos. That um, that would be my suggestion. Try to, as a beginner, um, I would do that first. Just try to copy from nature, copy something that is a real object. Um, even if you do like a like a rock, you find like a little stone and try to do it in 3D, it's not as easy as it might sound. Or an apple, just grab an apple and try to do that in 3D. Uh, and and look at pay attention and all the the intricate patterns and the and the shapes and the you know the the volumes. That might sound like a really simple thing to do. You know, an apple, just use a sphere and paint it, right? Um, but it's not as easy as, as it sounds and if you can manage to get a, a very very realistic look or very close look to the real thing or the real object that in itself is uh, an excellent practice for whatever you come to you know you, you will learn things along the way to try to reproduce something you will learn techniques that are totally applicable to you know monsters or, or whatever else characters whatever else you want to to, to focus on um, further down the track so yeah, I would say copy. S start by copying something, but don't try to copy um, a design from someone else or a concept from someone else straight away. I would go for something that is more, uh, something that you can find in the real world. Just um, like I said, an apple, whatever, whatever you feel like, um, whatever you, th you think is interesting, um, but try to keep it simple as well. That's why I suggested a an apple or, or a rock, something that it might feel like simple, nature because it uh, you can start with a with a simple sphere for example and then just deform that slightly to get the main shapes and then focus on the on the rest later um, whereas if you start with something that is you know very very complex um, and you're a beginner you might get frustrated with the with you know trying to get things look similar Okay, what time is it? All right, I think I made um, a decision. I don't like this guy. So I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna leave it there, and I'm just gonna destroy this again. Sorry. <laughs> last time, I promise. Well, last time before I, we get into into you know some detailing with a brush and poly paint. Not 
not liking the the casual idea. Look too too obvious. Too frogman. Bad frogman. Sorry about these guys, but yeah, I wasn't happy with the with the other cashew. Still keep the the line of the of the mouth. I, I kind of like that one, so not it's not completely different. <laughs> So this is, um, you know, we could keep going on about this for quite a bit, just trying to get something that looks interesting. But that, I think this one feels a bit more original than the, the Evangelion Kaiju type of shark. I mean, it's all right. It, it looks okay, I think, as a concept. Um, but. I think this is a more interesting shape. And even play a bit more with the with the ice position. Click it. Okay. Take this. <laughs> it changed the the whole dynamic of this character. Um, so let's continue. His name is Wilbur. Let's work. Let's work with that. Um, so this is Wilbur. I'm going to duplicate the eyes. Duplicate that, and I'm gonna take the one of the copies of the eyes, and I'm gonna inflate this. And from here, I'm gonna you know create the the eyelids. So let's go ahead and. Bring in what would be a good one for this. Um, you know, I haven't shown you like too many different techniques. We've just been talking about design um, mostly in this stream. So I'll show you a couple of techniques in this case. So I have these two set of eyes. So the first one is a slightly smaller. Here you see, it's slightly different. I want to take the the one that I inflated, this one here, and I'm going to duplicate it again. So now I have two set of eyes that are exactly the same size so three sets two of them are exactly the same size i'm going to um, take the first one i the second one right and i'm going to use the maybe the clip um yeah let's use the clip clip curve because the the trim one doesn't have a uh, symmetry but you can you know you can just mirror on well at the end let's see how we go so control and shift Control and shift from this angle. And if you press the Alt key at any point having this this line or this clip curve, it's going to create a, a point or a Bezier curve. So I created that point. Uh, you can double tap Alt and that gives you a sharper corner. But I think this one will work. All right. So let's trim that. You'll see we have the, the eyelids or the top eyelids for this guy. I'm going to bring in the gizmo and Actually, let's do that after. Let's bring the second piece. And let's create the bottom eyelids. So same concept. Control, Shift, to Control, Shift. Oh, come on. Control, Shift, Alt. Uh, you can also press the space bar to move this entire line. I'm going to go for something like this. And of, of course, because this is a clip brush, it's actually flooding in everything. Maybe just use the smooth brush. Find this a bit. Um, we can actually just do a dynamic for this. There we go. 
and the ones at the top let's do the same thing let's do a dynamish similar resolution and we have the the eyelids right uh, but what's great about this and having them separately is that we can play with a quick expression um again trying to get that feeling i think this guy looks funny <laughs> so um with this type of eyes obviously we have to refine that but we can bring in the gizmo and this gizmo is using well this current subtool has symmetry so we're using symmetry and is uh, the gizmo is centered to one of these eyes so we can just open the eyes like this so like blinking and we can also rotate it like that so we can make it like like a meaner look but i think this sort of like you know dozy kind of like look will be okay um it actually rotated a bit more like that and let's select the second pair of eyelids bottom one it's kind of like squinting trying to see what's really going on with this stream and i think that's all right okay so <laughs> that's that's the first part um now what we can do is we can either merge this into the actual head and dynamic that we can keep it separately uh, we can do a few things so let's say do or so that's my oh no sorry folder or i'm gonna put in everything in here i'm gonna duplicate this and duplicate go so i have my originals here and i have all of this so now i can take this and I'm gonna merge down merge 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 down okay and merge down again okay so now we have <clears throat> we have a single piece for all of this and we should also have different polygroups right so we can dynamesh and keep those polygroups so if I dynamesh right now oops see I have to increase the resolution a tiny bit so we can keep all of that right so we keep the the polygroups in case you need them later um, maybe to increase the the gap here you can just isolate that and work on this area but I'm, I don't need to do that but what I need to do is go ahead and refine this a bit more so I'm gonna bring in let's say a clay brush and try to get something like a lacrimal area a bit more obvious here just working on the transition of this so it doesn't look like a completely spherical shape it has some volume top as well so still it's like one of those eyes sticking out it's quite prominent but it's not just a single sphere right it transitions into the into the actual skull into the actual body a bit more naturally while keeping that idea of the you know their their um, bulging eyes oh no I think Uh, my tablet just crashed. Ah, that happened last time. Give me one second. I need to restart that. I still don't know why, why that happens. It only happens when I'm streaming for some weird reason. I don't. I think it has to do with the with OBS, the, the streaming software that I use. And zeroes the I don't know what exactly why that is, but unfortunately that is the case. So I think it's restarting. Alright, I think we have control over this again. Alright. Back in business. Sorry about that. Um oops. 
Oops. Now I don't have pressure. Brilliant. All right. So that's no that's no good. We have no pressure sensitivity now. Let's just keep working and see if for some. Let's see if that comes back. Usually, if I do something with a masking, try it again. Nope. Come on. Let's try with a move brush. Hmm, this is weird. Tile is not responding properly again. It's really annoying. We had we had a good run this time. Uh disconnect and reconnect should fix it. Mm, no, I've tried that. I'm just resetting the, the Wacom service. That should reset the drivers restart that uh doggy used to have that problem with Syntrig. Tried everything to drivers restart uh, main front port of the computer and would so that's interesting drivers start work service plugged into the main front port of the computer um Deactivate Windows Tablet Configuration. Alright, so those are things to try, maybe not during the stream, but... Um, so, yeah, um, just restarting the tablet should fix it. At least that that's what happened last time. But now I have no pressure. So Wilbur is not going to give any... Not, not going to work. All right, let's see if you guys can fix it. This is a challenge. Um, you have five minutes to tell me what to do. <laughs> tell me what to do and fix this. Um, I already tried disconnected, didn't work. Reset it, didn't work. So yeah, it's crazy. OBS with the Wacom drivers. There's some weird thing going on. I'm 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 hundred percent sure it's OBS. It doesn't happen with anything else. It just with uh, just happens with OBS when I'm. Um, either recording or streaming. Plug in and unplug in the, the USB. Um, yeah, I have that plugged in in directly to the to the main um, the main drive. Um, let's see. What is the Windows tablet thingy? Now restarting Sirius doesn't work. I tried that. So deactivating Windows tablet configuration. That might be something interesting there. Give me one second. I'm going to try a couple of things. Um, give me one second. I'll be right back.
All right. Um, I'm back, but now I think <laughs> I think now the camera is not on. Um, one second. I don't know what that is. Ah, uh, that's annoying. Yep. Now the camera is not working. Oh, that's the list of our problems. I'll do one more check. Uh, hang on a second. All right, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> this sorry about the, the technical issues today. Um, yeah, it's been a struggle lately, to be honest. So the the bad news is uh, the bad news is because I had to restart Zeroish. I forgot, and I closed this project. So basically, we lost the the time lapse. So we just have to you know, just deal with that and see. Um, Afterwards, in the recording, hopefully, you will be you'll you will see the progress of this lobby guy. Um, but yeah, we don't have undo history, I guess. Uh, we're back in terms of uh, the drivers. We don't have a we don't have a webcam, which is not really an issue. That uh, just leave that there. So the the camera just got frozen. So that's another thing to deal with later. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know what what the drivers, how the drivers are affecting OBS or how OBS is affecting the drivers. I don't know if it's something to do with Windows. I have no idea, but it is honestly a very annoying thing. It's a struggle. And again, I am 100% sure it has to do with OBS because it doesn't happen with any other recording software or anything else. It's only when I'm when I have um, OBS open that this actually happens. So I'm very confident that that's the problem. Let's just do a bit more on this guy and I really wanna had the really wanted to have the, the time lapse just to see the progression of this design but we'll do it with the with the recording of this stream, I guess. Got time lapse of that. Um so I'll do can do a bit of um can do a bit of custom brush, maybe add some details before we finish today. Uh, we probably won't have time to do poly paint, but we can just throw in some blocking colors really quickly. We didn't have too much um, time to refine this shape, so I'm just... After we change the design completely so I'm just going the clay brush fixing that uh, but yeah if you guys have some ideas about what what to do especially some of you guys that have already experienced that problem with OBS do let me know because it's it is been really annoying and it's not only with the stream it also happens when I'm recording uh, tutorials for the series guides uh, I was trying to streamline the process a little bit using that um, in OBS, but yeah, I'm going to have to fall back to what I was using before, which had no problems at all. And it's a shame because OBS is a, a really good software. It's just not practical for what I'm doing, is streaming and recording. And it should be, it should be. 
I think it should be it, it it's something to do with the Wacom tablets, honestly. Don't think about anything else. Uh might be might be a Windows issue as well or a Windows update. In fact, that could be one of the main things. Because it's starting to happen recently. I hadn't I haven't had these problems before. My you ha might have something to do with that, an update. Happens with Max too. Yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know what this, what this problem is related to. Uh, well, definitely driver issues but I mean it shouldn't be that hard <laughs> it is meant to be um, a streaming software right maybe it's just the not compatible with the with the Wacom drivers or it's actually the Wacom tablet that is the problem not OBS um, I mean the, the compatibility You don't use OBS and you have the same problem. Um, that's weird. I mean, I've only noticed this when I'm using OBS. For the rest of the time, it's absolutely fine. There's no problem at all. And it only, I mean, it only happens with ZBrush. And uh, actually, no, it happens with ZBrush and with Krita as well. I think it's any software that has it's very you know intense with the in the processor area processing it's it makes everything very very laggy and eventually breaks the drivers so you have to reset stuff so it doesn't have anything to do with zbrush I think it's just processing power but it's weird because again I have a, a pretty decent um processor Red Ripper, and it shouldn't give me any issues with that. Uh, someone else suggested that I could prioritize certain tasks. Let's say it's give ZBrush like more, I don't know, more priority, or vice versa to OBS. I haven't tried that. I'm not entirely sure how to do that. Um, very tech savvy in that sense. I'll, I have to figure that out. Yeah, this this breaks the whole flow of the stream. And it's annoying. Um, there is a solution in YouTube or Google. <laughs> Yeah, I know the video is is frozen. There's no the camera stopped working. That's another that's another issue. When I unplugged everything, camera stopped working. I have to check that out as well. Um, yeah, if you guys if you guys can figure out what the problem is and let me know. Someone else have already figured out. Just send me a link. I'll I'll try to that but maybe something to do with my configuration to be honest like I don't I don't see other the streamers having the same issue same problem so it might have to be with my drivers and my processor but it would be good to be able to identify the problem so that I solve it whether whatever it is The other thing that I notice is that my my EK remote controller is not reacting properly either. So a bunch of problems today with the stream uh, towards the end, which is not 
that bad. All right, I think I'm going to add a few wrinkles around the eyes just to indicate some of the the details that we can place around here. Um, it's a problem with both OBS and Krita, apparently. Going into OBS and under settings, advanced processing priority, that is to above normal or high. I haven't done that. Um, I reckon that would be one of the issues. I haven't actually configured like too extensively OBS. I think I just set the, the settings as for as long as, you know, almost the default settings for uh, streaming. Nothing too complicated. That might be something to try. I don't know if I could do it right now, or do I have to reset, restart uh, OBS, uh, but I could try that later. Am I in ZBrush Discord? Uh, I think I was there, uh, or uh, still, maybe I'm still. I, I just don't use Discord, to be honest, that much, or at all. Um, so, uh, I might be there. <laughs> um, I posted a couple of things, but yeah, I'm probably not there. If there is a there is an answer there, that would be great to know about this issue. So if you're in there as part of the Discord channel and you find that, that would be awesome. A thousand varieties of things I can try. Only wish you luck. Yeah, no worries, man. Thanks, thanks for the research. Um, I'll keep trying things. I already deactivated the tablet mode, which wasn't active, but I just made sure deactivated. Okay, the back is. I haven't done anything with the back. Find the head a bit. Okay, so not by any means the greatest of the characters, it's just I think it's funny. Um something different. Still kind of like cartoonish yet. Um picture. So it's, it's not bad. It's an example, I think it works. Probably refine the, the expression a tiny bit. Then we can go ahead and find some of these planes here and then go into the, the making of the brush. I mean, we have about 10 minutes for that. I was hoping to get a few more. 
few more minutes for this. Um, but we can just do that last 10 minutes and then continue this guy later on. So we can do something a bit, a bit more, a bit better. Um, so yeah, I do get points. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a ventriloquist, so I can, I can have a still frame in my camera and then still talk. Pretty powerful technique. All right. Um, go away. Let's just leave it there. And it, I could spend a lot more time trying to figure out things in here, but I think it has a good balance all around. Um, let's go ahead and do some custom brushes. Uh, when you load a new material and it takes over the previous one, how do you get that previous material back? Uh, you'll have to restart <laughs> or um, load it from the from the ZBrush preset spot. Yeah, uh, generally speaking, when you load a new material, I would choose a material that you don't use and then uh, load that. But when I load a new one, I will just choose something that I don't use often, like, I don't know, this Madcap Pearl, I don't use that or any of these ones. So I'll just choose that first and then load it. That would be the easiest one. Um, notice this guy doesn't have a nose. Really does have one. Just not very obvious. That a bit. Right, that's the nose. Okay, let's do a quick save, and I'm gonna do a um, maybe a couple of VDMs just to show you a different way of creating brushes. So I'm going to select a plane, go to make polymesh 3D, how much polygons we have to play with, uh, and I'm going to turn off, I guess it should be on the geometry, I'm going to turn off this SMT for, um, SMT is the subdivide smooth modifier, which means that I can subdivide this quite a bit, say six times, so now I have one million polygons to play with, uh, and this is still pretty, you know, sharp in terms of the the borders. So I'm going to go into a lowest subdivision or one of the low subdivision levels. No, actually, before I do that, I'm going to mask out square area, holding control and spacebar. With a spacebar, you can move everything. I'm going to mask, let's say, something like this. And then I'm going to go to the lowest subdivision level or one of the lowest ones, division three, and I'm going to click. Holding control, I'm going to click on the mask once, twice, three times, four, five times. That is just to blur the edges so it's not super, super strong. Okay, I'm going to invert that mask. And now let's go ahead and create some kind of a um, spike or like tiny little horn. I'm going to use the play to set the, the base. The lowest subdivision, lock it out better. Right, and I'm gonna take my move brush again, low resolution, push this out, and obviously, this is distorting the polygons, but fine once we increase the, the resolution fine tune the I think that works um we'll we'll play around with other um attributes of the of the brush once we create it let's Everything. One poly, one 
one subdivision at a time. We have that mask border. Right, and then let's bring in the clay brush. We find kind of like how this little horn or this little piece would um, sort of fade or transition into the actual skin of the character. And right now it looks pretty smooth just because we have quite a few of the vision levels. But the if you remember the the, the dynamic blob that we have for the character is not as as high res. So you're probably gonna get a result like this. It's good to, to keep that in mind. Uh, but then we can just subdivide that as well and, and get much more resolution. It's, it's fine either way. Let's do them standard brush. Plug through the model here. And again with the clay brush, add some bumps. That is not not very. It's not like a little horn, although it looks like it. But <laughs> and can be way more precise than what I'm doing. I'm gonna brush through this really quickly before we finish. Some lines, some cut lines. Tells around the the horn itself. Um, the more, I mean, the more uh, details that you make, and the more um, obvious those details are, the less. Uh, I mean, the the less the, the more obvious the pattern would be. So, in other words, the the more uh, specific details that you make, uh, the easier it's going to be to recognize that this is the same object. So if you keep it things generic, it's going to be actually better in terms of you know repeating the same object one uh, over and over. But you know. You can come back later and tweak it. Let's do uh, inflate a tiny bit, and with the clay brush one. Actually, with the standard brush, changing the volume slightly. All right, I think that's that's good. Uh, we can also bring in the trim dynamic. Add some planes or trim area a bit more. Cool. So let's go ahead and clear that mask. And what we can do now is select something like the chisel brush or even the standard brush. Standard brush should be fine. I just need to duplicate that. So select standard brush. Click on the brush thumbnail. I'm gonna clone that. So now this is a duplicate, and I'm gonna go to brush. I'm gonna put this on the right hand side so you guys can see it. So under the brush palette, now that I have this plane, um, I'm going to click on this button here. So from mesh. So basically, Siri is gonna take whatever is on this mesh and turn it into a VDM uh, if I have the standard selected or a clone of it. So from mesh, it's gonna give me this VDM and you know it's a VDM because it creates this um, sort of like Pika. So now I can click and drag. Whoops. I have to actually change stroke type. Let's change the stroke type to drag rect. And click and drag. So now this is working, but it's not having the impact that we that we expect. So we can just increase the C intensity 100%. Now this is 100% of this horn. And it has a nice fade, but if you want less of the fade, you can just push the local, uh, the focal shift down, and now you have more of these details around. So that's it. That's creating that single brush. So we can go back to our 
Wilbur guy. And with symmetry enabled as well, go ahead and down like that. Oop. Get all, all of these details. Pretty cool. And of course, you can have more than one in the same brush. You can uh, do a few more of these. So they're less, less obvious. Let's do that. Go back to like that one. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll bring in the trim dynamic and trim this horn quite a bit. But it is similar shape, but it is definitely you know, shorter, like a little stump. So this is an alternative, right, to the to the one that we just created. And we just need to select the VDM brush that we have. Click on from mesh, and now we have it in the same brush. Now we can go back to a Wilbur guy. It it should remember, or it, it has the same settings as the as the previous one, but as you can see, it's not as spiky. So that's one way to go about it in terms of creating details. Um, the other way would be to change the, the stroke type. Let's play around with this. Want to do that? So that sort of creates something and like interesting. Um, I'm gonna do something similar here at the bottom, in front of symmetry. So that it looks a bit more intentional, this and more organic. Uh, we can do the same thing here at the top. Place something without symmetry closer to the center line. Just gives that, that idea, that impression that is not Although some of the obvious details are just need to break that symmetry a little bit, and that should work nicely. Okay, that's uh, yeah. So that's one way to go about the the detailing process. You can also, for example, change the drag rate to, for example, dots that gives you this effect. Um, you can change the stroke palette, change to roll, that gives you this kind of effect. Or you can increase the lazy mouse, uh, what is it? I think it's the lazy step. So that, yeah, so you increase the lazy step, that should give you more gap between the dots. Keep reducing it, make them closer, and you can change that to anything. So you can do lines like this, you know, and then they will also be affected by the, the pressure. That's another interesting way that you can you know, generate interesting details. Try creating symmetry with a smaller brush, do it around there. Just remove some of those obvious details with the brush so you can have the same brush the same objects but you know the way that you apply it would change dramatically the the way that is supposed to work I guess um, another thing that you can do is change the spray so that's gonna be more random and this one will be let's say an interesting way to create a transition between these more big one big um, objects and 
you know this area that is a bit more plain so you could reduce the intensity right less than um and turn on off lazy mouse and you get quite a bit of this and if you want to reduce the amount of these bumps that you're getting right you can go to the stroke palette and you can play with the scale uh sorry with the flow and the placement so if you increase the placement to one it's going to be more spread apart if you reduce the placement it's going to be quite concentrated so let's push that all the way out to one and the flow just basically is how much of those dots are going to be placed so if we reduce the flow to 0.1 it's going to be less of those so you can start doing this sort of thing and then fade it and then use the smooth brush to fine but it gives you it gives you a good starting point for the for the details And of course, at any point you can just you can save this as different brushes, and at any point you can go back to adding those VDMs, which are pretty powerful. And it's also just a matter of thinking where um, the best place to put to put these these details would be, so that it doesn't you know you don't just cover this for the sake of adding in details covering everything but you know if you have some intentionality as to where to place these details then it's going to be much better to the design just went a little bit over the top showing you options uh, but yeah that's <laughs> that's how I would approach this uh, I'm gonna leave it here guys because I think I just reached my time and um and uh what was i going to say uh, yeah so th we're going to continue with this guy uh next stream and we'll probably detail it a little bit more add some wrinkles and you know something uh, make it a little bit more detailed more interesting um as well as maybe adding some poly paint but i think for what it was uh i think we did a an okay job to get this guy going uh, yeah, so I'm gonna leave it here guys. I'm gonna try some of the suggestions that you put in the chat to see if I can fix the Wacom driver stopping every now and again um, But yeah, so hopefully I answer some of your questions and and I'll try to give you some more tips and tricks um, Next time uh, by the way if you haven't uh, Received it so today I sent a pretty cool email about um, stylized hair so you might have got it if you are part of the um, the newsletter or the, my email list so I sent you a um, pretty cool one today and I'm working a really nice one as well for next week that so once it's ready you'll get it if you're part of the email list you you will get that as well all right guys so thanks so much for stopping by I'll see you next week hopefully with a fixed driver issue <laughs> I'll try some of the things that you suggested so uh, thanks so much for that and again thank you for stopping by I'll see you soon Cheers.